You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another interesting episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Super glad to be back with you here today. Thankful to you for spending a few minutes of your day with us. Go to askdroneu.com for your question submission. We want to hear from you, as do a lot of other people, because we know there are people out there that have questions, but for whatever reason, they're not, uh, they're not ready to hop on the computer and send it in. But we know you are. So let's hear your question, and you'd be surprised at how many people it will help. So... Now's a good time. Do it. We have a good one today. We got a great question today. Yeah. Got a very good question today uh, regarding flying the same exact point over and over again. Let's, uh, let's just hop right into that question, actually. My name is Ryan Sparrow. Uh, Instagram, Ryan J underscore Sparrow. Uh, I'm a landscape architecture uh, photographer based out of Indiana. Um, I also do some work for a startup, Hyvian.com, H-Y-V-I-O-N.com. My question is pretty simple. I've recently started uh, taking some aerial shots, uh, mainly for art prints, but I've realized that it'd be nice to go back and see that same um, spot over a transition of different seasons. How can I take some of the EXIF data from uh, some of the older images and put them into um, an app that will get me to that exact same precise spot uh, to shoot that um, in the next few different seasons change. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ryan. Again, astronew.com for your question. I can see a lot of people wanting to do this. It makes a lot of sense. And it, I mean, you could just kind of envision how cool uh, you could create things with this sort of a strategy. Have you done anything like this? No, uh, honestly, no, I have not. And Seems uh, kind of cool. Yeah, no, it does seem kind of cool. I think it would be cool to do like a hyperlapse over the seasons, obviously. This definitely takes it to a whole new level. So uh, what can you do? Um, I'm just going to give you the one solution that I know that works because we teach about this in the mapping class for uh, for other reasons, is Litchi. And Litchi, you can literally throw a point in there as a waypoint, enter it in various ways, and get the drone to fly to that point every single time. That said, there are some variables to eliminate because uh, you can, as you do this, you'll run into uh, the lesson or learning that if you don't complete a compass cal right or you take off in different locations, that the Hmm. the value of elevation can be different. So when it comes to eliminating variables, number one, make sure you take off from the same place. Number two, make sure that you conduct the compass calibration in the same methodology as the first photo. Very important. And uh, lastly, I would just say that, uh, you know, it's always a good idea too to maybe screenshot uh, your your phone or tablet when you've got grids and lines on to make sure that that perspective is always the same as well. But hmm. Long and the short of it is use Litchi. It's a great app. You can throw in the GPS data to get to that same location. Another variable you might have to eliminate is just making sure that the GPS coordinates are uh, spoken in the same language, if that makes sense. There's various ways to write out coordinates. uh, And you just want to make sure that uh, you are, um, how do I say this? You are consistent consistent and you convert those coordinates properly. Cool. Also, don't forget that DJI drones shoot GPS points in, um, what is it, WGS-84? So it's a older older system and uh, sometimes it doesn't always convert over, right? So just, just be aware of that. Chances are you're probably going to get it in the same position approximately every time. Just make sure you eliminate variables, take off from the same location. Your takeoff altitude is a factor of above ground level calculation. Hmm. So uh, make sure you do those. But Rob, I mean, that's that. But there's the formula. There you go. <laughs> that was, <laughs> that's uh, about as short as we get, folks. Okay, so let me ask you this. Oh, here we go. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All ready to go, yeah, apparently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just curious. Like, what do you? How do you see using this? And how? Um, for what medium? 
It was just just Instagram. I mean, just kind of a cool thing where you've got four shots you're looking at or something. Uh, storyboarding is one thing that I see actually where, and taking storyboarding even further, we actually showed this to one particular production. I'm not sure if they ended up using it or not, but showcasing to the production how they could plan their storyboard and then utilize the map that we, or the model that we had created for them. Uh, and by using that model, what I did is... Uh, uh, long story short is I showed them how they can recreate the camera motions in each story of the storyboard. And if they didn't have a very good drone pilot, how they could take those geo reference lines and, mm. and you can only do this in Pix4D, by the way, and export them and then import them into Litchi and have the drone fly the exact camera path hmm. to literally match the storyboard to see if that was still the shot that they wanted to take. It's a lot of planning. It's a lot of planning. Uh, I'm not sure how much uh, they did this, but it is something that we showed them. So, um, Well, you went a lot deeper on that answer than I thought you... <laughs> I mean, you asked. I did ask. <laughs> the thing I is, is uh, let me tell you this, Rob. Uh, Pix40 is like Photoshop. As soon as you feel like you know it, there's something there's new. something new. And then as soon as you think you know it, there's something new on top of that. And you got to use it regularly because I use Photoshop once every, it feels like 90 days and it frustrates the crap out of me when I try to pick it back up. Really? It does, uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, uh, it'll well. get better in time, I promise. Well, I need practice. to do it more. I just need to practice. But anyways. Yes. Cool. Anyways, this is one of those things that, like, again, you know, we've talked about the 10 different ways to sell a point cloud. That's probably uh, number 68. So, I mean, literally, <laughs> we took the same point cloud that we had sold yeah. to, like, four count, different parties. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, uh, my point is, is that this is just another way that you can use modeling, mapping, whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, to do so much more than just take little tiny measurements. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Of course, Ryan's just talking about some images, it sounds like. Or, well, probably video would be my guess hmm. in terms of... Yeah, what he's for, talking about doing. I I'm doubt I'm guessing it's he's talking related. hyperlapse. So yeah. he's probably taking like a 30 second video like once a month in the same location. So have you seen the new Nike commercial where, and I saw it online. I don't remember where I saw it. Anyways, but what they've done, it's hard to describe. They've taken two videos next to each other. And like, let's say it's a skier crashing. And on the left, it is a female but then the second half, the, the other half of her, it's the male. And then it totally transitions across the line from the female into the male. Hmm. And they used a lot of different ways of doing that. And I don't know why, but this kind of makes me think of just doing those kinds of creative things with video and reusing the same points as, as you did prior. I mean, it's, it's so cool to see creatives work because I'm not a creative at heart. I wish I were. Um, but it's it reminds you of the show of the 16 year old, right? About how we utilize these different yeah. creative advantages and take different skills and we put them together yeah. to acquire a new service or a product. That is the definition of entrepreneurialism. Yeah. And it's, uh, I think it's pushing the envelope. It's, um, don't restrict yourself within the, within the confines of ethics and morality, <laughs> for example, and your safety, um, don't restrict yourself, right? Just get out there and see what you can do. And uh, man, it's amazing what people come up with. I'm constantly amazed. It's fun. Yeah, no, it's fun. It, it, it totally is. Well, hey, uh, honestly, there's a lot of opportunity out there. What are you doing right now to build relationships, to get new jobs and to keep up your skills and learning more? That whole conversation that we just had is a, a perfect illustration to Rob of why you've got to keep learning. Mm. And as much as sometimes it kind of gets tedious and you're like, haven't I learned enough this year? And I ask myself that all the time. Trust me. I'll never forget <laughs> talking about 2021 and telling Paul, hey, something I think we should do is maybe we each kind of find a class that we're interested in and go learn something. And he looked at me. You would have thought I just beat his dog, <laughs> which I would never do, Kona. Uh, because I think I in remember. your mind you were thinking, holy cow, I'm, I, I'm going through like 12 classes right now. I literally remember what I oh, said yeah. to you. It was pretty rude. I'm sorry. I don't sorry. think you said much at all. Other, I mean, the look said enough. <laughs> I looked at you like you were high as a kite. I was like, uh, you don't think I'm learning Never enough? stop learning, right man. Now. Never stop learning. But honestly, that is a great opportunity of learning for me. 
You know why? Because one of my big things that I do that's rude to people, and I don't even realize it's rude to people, is writing people off. Uh, sort of a condescension, and condescension, and I'm not saying you, but it's something people do. Or we're condescending yeah. to other people. It's like cancel culture. You know, when you're just tired of dealing with it, just nah, nope, that's not how America works. Sorry. So damn yeah. straight it's not. <laughs> Don't worry, California Board of Surveyors, you're gonna learn too. <laughs> so it's called the Supremacy Clause. Good luck. Anyway, we're gonna have <laughs> some <laughs> I'm surprised it took you so long to sneak that in there. Oh no, I wanted to give them an opportunity to show their true colors and see if they had compassion. No, we're gonna it's not a big deal. No, it's not it's we're not. not gonna make a big deal out of it. Well, I might just to prove a point. So I don't like it when people bully people, and I like to go extra they are hard. bullying. I would agree with that. I like that. to go extra hard on people that do that. Because that almost makes me wonder if somebody gets a commission or something. Mm, if, we, if we could find out if someone got a commission on a fine, <laughs> that would be so federally is, illegal of illegal. That is quite an accusation on my part, and it is absolutely not what I actually Honestly, think. with the level of specificity. Anyway, long story short, know your rights. Don't give them up. <laughs> Don't let people get under your skin. Stay positive. Keep fighting. And uh, what was our question about? <laughs> <laughs> We're way past that. Uh, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't. Thank anyway. you very much for the question, Ryan. And if you have a follow up, maybe you go and you try what Paul talked about with Litchie. Yeah. Let us know how it goes. We'd love to hear from you as to the uh, success or hopefully not failure of the activity. Yeah. And I would say, by the way, I, I recommend Litchie. I know DJI does offer this uh, uh, waypoint functionality, um, but we've seen it be so variable and, and approximate. I, don't, I wouldn't recommend it, which is why I went there. But anyway, long story short is uh, I think that he's going to find that option really useful. Let us know what you thought. Give us some feedback. We'd love to hear it. And if you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. Please do and subscribe. That's going to do it for us today. Hit that subscribe button. Leave us a review. It helps us. Thanks again. My name is Paul. My name's Rob. This is Ask Drone You. <laughs> <laughs>